It actually exists. And it's because of what this gentleman, our next speaker, has done. This uh, land exists, it is available, and I'm pretty excited to find out what's going on. So, uh, Yik, uh, Yidlichka, did I say that right? Yes. Yidlichka? Yidlichka. Yidlichka, yeah, I'm working on that right, right. now to get the pronunciation out. Uh, he received his bachelor's degree from the University of Economics in Prague, way cool city. If you haven't been to Prague, put it on your bucket list. One of the great cities of the world. 2009, and his master's degree from Sevco Institute in 2014. Since then, he has been a member of the Free Citizens Party. I've never heard of that, but doesn't that sound cool? Yeah. Free, so I like it already. Free Citizens Party, where he was checked, uh, where he checked the first regional president of the Hardy Carvick. You, you're going to have to help me out this. Year. You can tell I'm not uh, going to be able to. Yeah, it's, cool. it's my it's my birth town, you know. But it's, uh, the, the matter of the fact that it was that I, I'm I think my my, oh, my, my works, works yes yes. Matter of the fact, I've been into libertarian movement for quite some time. Uh, it has been a great experience, but of course, there were a lot of downfalls. And, uh, Excellent. Well, yeah, I'm going to leave it over to you to yeah. take over. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome right now for our next speaker, Yid Alicia. Yeah, hello. It's great to be here at Anarcho Polko with so many like minded people. It's a little bit awkward situation when our anarcho capitalists are inviting a president of a state uh, to speak. Uh, I can understand that. But let me explain you a little bit how that happened, actually. So I would like to thank Jeff Berwick for inviting me to Anarchopulco. I would like to also thank uh, uh, Rodrigo Vasquez uh, for representing us and really being a, a good future ambassador to Mexico. He's back there. He's giving my hand. Uh, he, I've got uh, Adam Ernst, who is representing us in Virginia. Here, there he is. He is an uh, author of very cool project. Follow on my vote, and he's one of the cryptocurrency leaders. And also Nicholas Nikolaisen, who was one of the early settlers of Liberland. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> and also he is our Bitcoin Swiss banker for now. And I'm, I'm really, you know, I can recommend you his services. He's a great guy. And also I would like to thank Kamil, uh, who is the owner of a Libertarian University. Uh, they are planning a trip now to Liberland for this conference that we are doing, that we are preparing now. It's going to be on 13th of April and I hope their whole school is coming for the debate and visit Liberland as well and I also invite all of you. So, we've got also now 70 other representatives around the world and they have been very motivated by this idea of a completely free country. And uh, we've got some 400,000 people that applied or registered or applied for citizenship in the early days, it was crazy. We had more than uh, 300,000 emails coming. There was no way we could ever go through all these emails. And now we have we've got 85,000 people that, that fulfill the application properly and that we are considering for the citizenship. But we are only giving the citizenship to people that are directly engaged and help us with our effort. I think we are the fastest and the biggest network or biggest gathering of liberal libertarian minded people now in the world with only a couple of competitors like Students for Liberty. And uh, also, we've got something like 1,200 lawyers, 1,200 architects on the project. So it's, it's an enormous opportunity for specialists to get engaged. You want to see a libertarian state, do you not just talk about it, join the project and help us define what really a libertarian slash anarcho-capitalist state could look like. And it's a big challenge, I can tell you. It's a big challenge. If you're, if you're thinking just about those things and then you're putting it into reality, we've got a big debate now between Mises Institute and uh, an author of our constitution. Should we go more anarcho-capitalist way or should we stick uh, with the classical constitution? And, uh, you know, I think it's a time for a new country here. It's time for a country which is based entirely on voluntarism, on a free exchange. And I think we can have a government that will collect taxes on a voluntary basis, that it's entirely doable with all these crowdfunding platforms today. 
And, uh, you know, what we are doing is that we said st we li strictly limited state to take care only of justice, security, and diplomacy, nothing a part of that. The state is now limited, it cannot make any laws about marriage, about healthcare system, about education, it's, it's, and that it, it's right in the Constitution. And so I'm doing all I can also to define that, what makes a country country, in order to be internationally recognized. So we have to fit in the reality of today, but we don't want to compromise too much. And, you know, it doesn't really matter at the end what is this overall structure of the state, as long as people are free to do whatever they want, as long as the state doesn't meddle into people's affairs. One good example is the monarchy of Liechtenstein. I hope to meet Hans Adam in a couple of days in the United States, uh, again at the Students for Liberty conference, and it's a good example. So I don't think you know it's too much a debate about the structure. It's about how much authoritarian slash libertarian again the state is. And uh, you know the, the most people that join these projects are actually big fans. And the reason why they join this project is that they feel oppressed by their countries. Sometimes they must not necessarily be libertarian, but they are leaving their country because they cannot do their business. They're they're living in a poor conditions as well. And you know, we are living in a society which is turning to a more and more social democratic like global government and we have to face it, we have to do something about it. This was my biggest concern with my, with my other projects that I have been doing. And I think you know, building these small places that can work as an example for the rest of the world is one of the solutions in reality that can make it. You know, a very positive approach is a big thing about Liberland. Uh, we are taking every obstacle on our way and we are using it to build a brighter future. We take every bit of negative energy pointed at us and we recycle it to our advantage. I strongly believe what I was told by one of the Croatian diplomats, that Liberland has a great chance of existence if we are mainly about liberty and love. And I think this is exactly what Liberland is about. So uh, let me give you a, a small presentation of what we have achieved, what we have done so far. Um, you know, um, so uh, this is, for example, the cadastral registry, right? Uh, there is no other country, a part of Liberland, that would make any kind of, that would have any kind of information about this piece of land. It's, uh, this piece is registered uh, by Croatia and this piece is registered by Serbia, and there are some news said that you know the, both countries claim this piece of land. It's not true. <laughs> you know we've got a direct proof from the foreign ministry of Serbia that they don't claim this piece of land. And if you go there from Croatia, they will. This is Croatia. If you go there from Croatia, you will be uh, punished for illegally crossing the borders. And you know we've we've met that. We've we've had some 38 cases of illegal border crossing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's we're gonna fix it at the end. And uh, you know, we've got now a system where we, you know, anybody who contributes gets those merits in return. And we are also going to build up a passport so anybody who basically helps the Liberland in any significant way will be also a member. And how is it possible that uh, you know we can create a country from scratch? There are Montevideo conventions that say you have to have a, a land. Uh, very well defined, I could I should show you that. You have to have a population, you have to have a government, and you have to have a control over the land, which is a very important aspect. This is the only aspect that we are missing so far. And it's one of the key projects for this year. And also Montevideo conventions say very strictly that the state, the political existence of state is independent by recognition by other states. So if somebody says, you know, you are making your state up, it's, it's, this is how the states are made. You know, I say this is this is Liberland, and if there is enough people who believe in that, you know, I don't have to get any approval from UN or from EU or from any other state to be that. And even Montevideo Convention say that, that this is exactly the fact. You know, you, you you don't have to ask your neighbor to build a country, basically. And also, it says that all the states are judicially equal, which is great. You know, that we have the same rights, even though we are not recognized yet. But we are working hard to get recognized, and I think we can, by the May, maybe get a first recognition. And if any territory is now obtained by force, it is not considered to be illegal as well. 
So we are using Montevideo conventions as, as a guidelines how to set up LibreLab. And what, they, what the Serbia said only 11 days after creation of Liberland, and they really loved it, is that the, the, in accordance to the elimination of legal borders, it's the new state is not founded on the territory of Republic of Serbia, which was a great support. And they really loved it because they felt like they're sort of creating another Kosovo for Croatia. Uh, and I think you know, that was the main reason why they supported it, but also we are helping them a little bit to solve the, the nonsense that is going on for more than 24 years. And those two countries cannot make any kind of move in that ongoing border dispute. And so if you take a look in the Croatia land registry, it's very clear that they don't have a claim to it even on the private level. So what we've got now is those 37 cases uh, of uh, arrests. And uh, we know that if you go there from Croatia, that you're illegally exiting uh, Croatia or Schengen area out of the borders. And if you go there from Serbia, we were also arrested for doing that, but we have no reply from the court so far. It's already like eight months or seven months now, and they still didn't get back to us when we appealed. Uh, so, you know, there is a great chance that we will be able to break it through in the near future. And we all also have a strategy. So we are going to move to higher court and to constitutional court and then to European Court for Human Rights. They're trying to fundraise money for it, something about $25,000 for the old legal procedures or the way up to the pyramid. And, you know, the, the people that uh, apply for citizenship, probably like 40% come from Middle East. It was very popular there. Uh, but not too many people that applied are like refugees. Some media tried to portray that, that you know, those people that applied are refugees. So there were people that had uh, internet connection, that had media uh, coverage of Liberland. So they were you know, the ones that they just want to uh, also get in Europe, maybe uh, get more freedom. I, and I don't wonder, you know, in Egypt, for example, 82,000 people applied for citizenship in the yearly stage. You know, we are in a good position to do uh, an, a nice new political party in e Egypt if we want it. Uh, and then, you know, countries like United States, we've got 10,000 people there. Czech Republic, 9,000 people. And then we are kind of evenly spread around the world. It's like one person out of one percent of the population are the people that truly believe in liberty. We've got stamps. We've got a nice beer that I was supposed to bring you for the gala event. And those are all private initiatives. You know, we are not uh, charging. We are not. I'm not into that. I was just showing the bottle, and I know it's already in production. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring it with me. And this, this guy, for example, who is making the, that beer, he's a rich investor in Czech Republic. He wants to develop, help develop the whole infrastructure for the country, make business around it. And I think it's a great entrepreneurial opportunity. Like he's got another ten websites selling different Liberlandian stuff in near future. And we've got a, a, a great architectural competition. I'm very proud of having Patrick Schumacher on board. He is the partner at Zaha Hadid. I don't know if you know the architectural studios, but they are making some amazing things. And now we've got 75 architectural studios that applied for the competition that Patrick Schumacher is organizing. Oh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah. You are seeing the whole presentation. This, this is, for example, the building that they, that they just finished. And uh, this is also one. So I hope to have a really nice pictures of how Liberland would look like. And we already have some yearly sketches of what we want to do there. We want to have more green stuff there than there would be previously. And that, at least at that urban planning, some kind of setup. And Patrick Schumacher is expert on free market urban <coughs> planning. This is also a great reason to have him on board. This is one of the reasons he got involved. And this is the situation now, right? This is the only house that is there abundant for 30 years. <laughs> it's not, a, not the best, uh, con in, not, but in best condition. We've got, there were two Americans that got there despite the blockade by Croatia police. And one Chinese guy, also formerly American. And they were always laughing, the Croatia media were laughing, you know, the, this is their parliament, see how shitty you know, this, this country is. It cannot even take care of its own building. It was my main miss mission last summer to, to, to fix it. And that's why I made a nice, nice uh, you know, design, what we want to do. And we would like to fit one policeman there, one justice guy, somebody for diplomacy, and maybe some 20 people for some kind of parliament. 
in the future. But it's still, you know, it's still not being decided. And if you would like to join this libertarian and a minarchist slash anarcho-capitalist debate, you are very welcome. Uh, if you have some strong opinion on that, then you are able to put it in practice as well, not only talk about it. So, you know, you can see that uh, the most of the civilized world is covered. If you see some white space and you come from that country, you're very welcome to help us represent Liberland there. And we've got a support not only from regular people, but directly from political parties. No wonder these parties are usually libertarian. Uh, parties or close to libertarian. I don't know if you know some of them, but some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, which I don't think any other country would have a network of political parties supporting another state. And this guy, for example, is Juan Pina, the chairman of the Libertarian Party in, uh, in Spain, and he's also representing us in Spain. We've got a, a guy uh, in the Swiss parliament. This is the biggest political party, the Swiss People's Party. Lucas Reimann, who helped, helped me a lot already. Yeah, we've got lots of members from European Parliament. One of them even got arrested because of Liberland. Uh, you know, he used his diplomatic immunity to, to get out of that trouble. But this is Corwin Mikke, with me and also the, the author of our constitution that you can find on website, and the Justice Minister, Kasper Zayat. And we've got some plans that are, that are a little bit more out, I would like to make a most sophisticated company registry, which would really provide a great value. I don't know how many of you actually listened to the crypto anarchy lecture yesterday, but the sharing economy universal app is something that, that is really in my mind for quite a long, like really allow anybody to Uberize anything. And I would like to, to make that happen so it, it will allow people to use any kind of payment and allow them to, to sell any kind of service online. And I'm, I'm still trying to find a partner for that. But I think it would be cool if you register a company in Liberland and you also get a great marketing tools with it. So we've got the Minister of Justice, Jan Puk Rabek. He's a great a libertarian, skilled professional who was running his own hedge fund. And we've got Andrei Tihoňský, who is going to lead the settlement effort. You will find him there if you're going to come for the summer. We've got Monika Chlumska, my secretary, and now also minister, foreign minister. She's working a lot uh, to get Liberland recognized. And we've got, you know, this is how the closest houses next to Liberland look like. We would like to put our boats there, you know, move people there on permanent basis and uh, have fun in the summer. And there is a lot of, lot of ways how to have fun. There are sandy beaches 600 meters long, nice weather starting in April and so on. And we would like to have uh, some yearly settlement. Like I told you that actually taking control over the territory and settling it properly is one of the, the first things that we have to do. And this is one of the cool ways to settle it because it's absolutely independent unit that has just started to be produced in Slovakia. And it's only like 40,000 euros, completely self-sustainable. And we've got a lot of plans for the coming future, uh, but we think that we need at least another year to move forward with the territorial control and with the infrastructure development. But really, really, we would like to be the world's most libertarian and most developed country in the future, in long run. And I would like to invite you for the one year of existence conference in Liberland on 13th, or on 13th to 16th of April. We're gonna be in the, the closest and the, the very nice hotel there. I would like to invite some very good speakers uh, to talk about how much of a benefit could Liberland bring to both Croatia and Serbia. And I think it's the most important point is to sell it to the public and to the politicians in Croatia and Serbia. And also I would like to invite you to, to the summer festival that we are going to organize. It's going to be something like Burning Man. We hope to bring, <laughs> we hope to, we hope to bring uh, like 5,000 people there for that. And that could be the crowd that could, you know, make it and take the territorial control of the territory of Liberland as well. And we've got a good partners. We've got a, somebody from Ministry of Sound, somebody from Exit Festival, and somebody from Czech Republic who is doing these, uh, these events. Uh, so I think it will be somewhere around 27th of July. Uh, so, but it's not definitely set yet because there are other, other big events and we are trying to fit it in. So I would love to have you there. You can use Air Liberland, which is a new airline, which was started like a week after the country was started. Or you can fly very cheaply 
uh, using Ryanair from London for only 32 uh, pounds, a return ticket from London, which is quite amazing. You fly to Osijek and then it's very close to Liverland. And, uh, you know, I would like to really see you there in the summer, some of you. If you don't have plans for summer, 